More than 100% commission? How is that possible? Hey, welcome to the Satisfy YouTube channel. In this channel, we talk about personal finance, money, and saving on meals by meeting more insurance agents and financial advisors. So in my previous video about ILPs, I told you guys to send me policies that you've been proposed or personally bought so that I can analyze them. And you guys didn't disappoint. Now today, we're going to go through what Andy sent to me. Uh, his agent actually proposed him this $18,000 savings policy and we're going to dissect it and see whether it's a worthy buy. Spoiler alert, probably not. Let's get into it. Now it's going to be a bit dry, but I think you should watch to the end because you can learn a lot about how to read a benefit illustration. So the next time an insurance agent actually approaches you with this kind of material, you, you know what to look out for. So at the very first page of any benefit illustration, you'll see the cover page. And the cover page uh, will list out the name, which I obviously blanked out because I don't want to get sued. And this is a participating endowment plan, which is your long-term savings plan. And it's really long-term, 30 years policy term, right? And you have to pay throughout the term. And again, the name of insurer is <laughs> Company. Well, if you can lip read, I'm, I'm kind of screwed, I guess. Okay, so some of the risks that you'll face. So as you can see, savings plans are an investment, right? They highlight the risks that you face. Okay, so what can you expect to get based on the illustrated investment rates? So uh, such participating plans, they will project two different projections, one higher one at 4.75% and one lower one at 3.25%. Uh, these two numbers have actually been revised to 4%, I think, and 3%, right? So they have reduced the projections. Now, as the name suggests, these are projections, right? So they are not guaranteed. They are just more optimistic and less optimistic illustrations of what you might get as the plan plays out over the next 20, 30 years. So if the plan performs at 4.75% per annum throughout the 30 years, right, you can expect to get 3.57% per annum. And at the less optimistic rate of 3.25% per annum, you can expect to get 2.3% per annum at your maturity, which is 30 years later. So they will show you how the participating fund has performed over the last few years. Now, I even blacked out some of the digits, so you all cannot really trace back the fund performance and link which insurer this is. Okay, but even if you can, right, please don't get me into trouble. I don't get sued. Well, actually, I'm just stating my honest opinion and this guy wanted my opinion. So I'm just giving you my opinion. Huh? This is not financial advice, okay? Okay, so in the past three years, the investment returns of the participating fund has been about 10%. Uh, then it became negative and then it was about 12%. So average is about uh, 6% for the past three years and five years time about 5%. Last 10 years, about 10%. Not too bad. I mean, participating funds, they are lower risk profile. So to perform at about 5% per annum sounds about right, I would say, for a fund that's about 30% equities. Of course, uh, moving forward, if the fund doesn't perform well uh, year on year, especially, they normally will cut bonuses. So they will not give you the more optimistic projection. All right, they also show you the historical expense ratios of the participating fund. So telling you how much it costs to manage and run the fund. Okay, it's actually very high. Uh. I've never seen a fund almost breaching 3% before. And then next, we have our favorite distribution costs, right? So what's distribution costs? Okay, those who have watched my previous video will know it is cash payments in the form of commissions and benefits paid to the distribution channel and its representatives who have provided you with financial advice. So they like to highlight that it's not an additional cost. Okay, it's already calculated in the plan. Uh, but that's the reason why your plan isn't doing as well as it could be. Right, it's because of all these distribution costs which are incurred at the start of the policy. Right, and the total distribution cost is $45,000 for this policy. Okay, the premium size for this policy is quite huge. Uh, it makes up 8.4% and it's taken at the start. Right, so high upfront cost. All right, so here we see all the distribution costs that's been paid to date. Now, the first year, right, you will have paid $18,000 in premium and the total distribution cost is actually $28,000. Now, if you're wondering, more than 100% commission, how is that possible? It's actually quite possible because insurance companies have done it before. They pay more than 100% of the first year premium as commission to the agent as well as the distribution firm so that they can incentivize agent to sell more. Now remember when Haley said there's no such thing as 100% commissions? Well, she might be quite right because sometimes insurance companies actually pay more than 100% of the first year premium as commissions to the agent as well as the agent's firm or managers. They also know that it's highly unlikely for the policy owner to lapse the plan in the first few years because remember, your surrender value is only $0 in the first couple of years. So this is a business strategy. They pay more than the premiums that they collect in commissions and this will incentivize agents to work harder and sell more of these policies to the masses. 
right? So you reach this page, uh, which shows you the premium as well as the premium term, right? And this is a yearly premium of eighteen thousand dollars, right? So thousand five hundred dollars a month. Now a word about premium modes uh, is that if you pay monthly is thousand five hundred thirty dollars, whereas you pay yearly is eighteen thousand dollars. So I think uh, some interest agents they like to say, oh, if you pay yearly, there's a discount. Now it's actually the other way round, right? The yearly premium is eighteen thousand dollars. If you pay monthly, there's actually an additional charge, right? So additional thirty dollars every month, and these thirty dollars do not go into your savings, right? It's purely cost. So if you take thirty dollars times twelve, it's actually uh, three hundred sixty dollars. So if you're paying monthly, right, it's actually a worse deal than you thought. It won't even find this thirty dollars in the projection at all. They take it as eighteen thousand dollars a year. And over here, they specify the death benefit, a uh, very minimal insurance coverage, uh, 105% of the total premiums or 101% of the surrender value. All right, so just a few percent above what you have paid. So we have reached this page, which is death benefit. Uh, it shows you the interest coverage. Again, it's very minimal, so you can skip past this page. Okay, and move on to surrender value. And as I mentioned before, distribution cost takes up two years of your premium. So guess what? Zero dollars if you surrender the policy in the first or second year, right? Totally, you won't get any money back. And that's after paying $36,000. So based on the projections, uh, this is a 30-year policy. So at the 10th year, you're definitely not going to get your money back. Okay, at $180,000 paid, if you perform at a less optimistic projection, you surrender it, you only get less than $40,000. Uh, even at the higher projection, you only get about $40,000, all right? After 15 years, if you decide to surrender it, uh, you have paid $270,000, but you only get $134,000 to $133,000 back. Right? Such a plan, you really need to hold to maturity. Even at 20 years, you don't get much of your money back. Okay, 25 years onwards, you start to see some returns. Nearly nothing if you consider 25 years. Well, it's only at the end of 30 years before you see a huge jump in the surrender value. Right, you finally get $973,000, $228. Okay, so this is 3.57% per annum return, provided the participating fund does 4.75% per annum on average over 30 years. Now, I don't doubt that they can actually do that, but after doing that, they actually take their cut and you're left with 3.57% per annum. Now, if you were to put this $18,000 uh, into another investment for 30 years, and let's say it gives you 4.75% per annum return as well without fees, it's $1.2 million. Right, but of course, maybe it's not so realistic to have zero fees. So let's project at four percent. Right, you still earn one million and fifty thousand dollars. Now, even though three point five seven percent and four percent sound about the same, uh, over thirty years, right, this can lead to a difference of almost hundred thousand dollars. So you've given up two years of premiums to distribution costs, and of course, the insurance company need to take its cut, and the difference is your loss. What if you actually pass on, let's say, fifteen years into the policy? Right, you have paid two hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and how much would they give you? Right, they'll give you one hundred and five percent of the premium paid. Right, you get two hundred eighty-three thousand and five hundred dollars. This is a very low return. Imagine locking up your funds for fifteen years, all two hundred seventy thousand dollars of it, and only getting two hundred eighty-three thousand five hundred dollars back. That's like I think less than zero point five percent. Here we have the table of deductions, which shows you what your premiums will grow to. If we consider the 4.75% investment return without fees, right? So after 30 years, you have contributed $540,000 in premium. By right, you should be getting $1.2 million if your money was invested at 4.75% without fees. And the plan only gives you $973,228. So you have made a loss of $227,000 due to the deductions, which is all the distribution costs and of course the insurance profits and expense ratios. Now, I feel that this isn't even the worst case scenario that will happen if you purchase a savings plan. Because in a 30-year period, you could have used your premiums to invest instead and get higher returns than this. Now, even if it's not 8 or 10%, even if it's something like 5 or 6%, right, the returns can be a lot larger than what you see over here. And therefore, this effect of deduction doesn't really show you the full opportunity cost that you have faced. You could have invested... Uh, for a much higher return over that long 30-year period. So instead of putting the money in the savings plan, you could have actually invested at a rather conservative, let's say 6% per annum return, and you net off 1% for fees and get 5% per annum return. That's $1.255 million. Substantially better than the 3.57% per annum return you have gotten. 
and let's say you're more aggressive with your investment and again bear in mind it's a 30 year time horizon let's say you get six percent after considering all fees it is 1.5 million dollars so this is not entirely difficult to get as well there are a lot of investment vehicles right now that you can put your funds aside for 30 year period and you can get 1.5 million substantially more than the $973,000 you get with the savings plan. Now, of course, investing has risk, okay? A lot of disclaimer, a lot of asterisk, right? But the thing is, your savings plan is also an investment. If you were to invest in a broadly diversified fund somewhere else with low fees and no upfront commissions, chances are in 30 years, it would definitely at least match or exceed the performance, right? Now, it can't be that investments outside are risky and then savings plans somehow are immune to investment risk. I'm telling you to pick the better one with fewer and less fees. So the verdict is, do not buy this plan, obviously. First of all, the returns are not good, right? For the same investment return, you can get them outside with a lower fee and enhance your returns, right? You can also invest in higher yielding investments and get much better returns in the long run. Again, 30-year time horizon, please don't lock them up in an overly conservative portfolio. Number three, it is also inflexible. Let's say 10 years into the policy and you need some cash, what can you do? This policy does not allow you to withdraw. So if you need money in future, tough luck. You have to borrow against it and actually pay your interest. Number four, if you unfortunately pass away during the first 20 or so years of the policy, you actually only get 105% of the premiums paid, uh, which is actually very low if you have held it for 15 to 20 over years. Right, uh, less than 1% per annum return. So check out some of my recommendations down below. And disclaimer, I do earn a referral fee from it, but not as much as more than 100% commission. Right, so far about 4 to 5 people have sent me their policies to analyze and I'll take some time to get through them, but do keep them coming. Uh, I will prioritize those that are more interesting to highlight to my subscribers. And subscribe if you like this content, leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe to my telegram, and I'll see you next video. If you need clarification, uh, do not hesitate to ask your representative, right? Don't ask Satisfy. He sure tell you not to buy one. He sure tell you this plan lousy. No, don't. Don't ask Seth. Ask representative appointed by us. Distributor appointed by us. Don't ask Seth.